Today we're gonna take a look at rumble pedals. If you don't know what rumble pedals are, it's a way to have haptic feedback or force feedback directly on your pedals of your sim racing rig. In my case, this was a very easy addition because I had already had that Arduino Uno and Motor Shield you see in the middle of the screen uh, running my wind simulation. So I already had two open channels to run the rumble pedals. So this was uh, pretty quick and easy. And it starts with taking a PS4 controller apart and robbing the rumble motors to uh, to make this whole thing work. So as we watch me rip through, this is a generic PS4 controller. Uh, you could use a, a Sony PS4 controller. I actually also ended up mixing and matching parts from a Logitech gaming controller. So I think these are 25 millimeter rumble motors. They're pretty common. So. Uh, we just got this thing apart and then pulled the circuit board off and uh, then we're going to get the, the soldering iron out. But here are the rumble motors. So the way they work, it's just a little electric motor with some offset weights on the shaft of the motor so that when it spins, it's out of balance. Kind of like if you've ever had your washing machine with a bunch of uh, all the clothes kind of shift to one side and then that thing is just out of balance and makes all kinds of noise. So this is sort of a miniaturized version done intentionally. All right, so after getting the soldering iron out and peeling back some hot glue, um, we're gonna get these things off. Then I went and off camera extended the wiring harness for both of these guys. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I did end up swapping these out because these were really pretty flimsy. So I ended up using uh, some Logitech uh, gaming controllers. Anyway, my first attempt here was really kind of a proof of concept to see how is this going to work. So I just ran one zip tie through the existing holes in my Fanatec CSL pedals. And... Um, this worked better than I expected, to be honest with you. So here we get the, uh, the zip tie in place and just tighten it around that motor, just being careful to keep the wiring out of the way. So I ended up coming in from the other side there and uh, that's it, man. You just pull that sucker tight and uh, clip off the end. And pretty much phase one physical install was done. Uh, my preferred method of removing the excess zip tie tail and that's what it looked like once I uh, got the wiring in and fed that into the Arduino Uno there's the accelerator there's the back side of the brake in action but we need to back up a little bit here to get this in action I had to wire it to the Arduino Uno and the Uno and the motor shield so the, you can see the M1 and M2 on that motor shield those go to the fans of my wind simulation and the rumble pedals went to or I wired them to the M3 and M4 pedal or uh, output so brake to M3 accelerator to M4 and uh, once it's wired in, then we're gonna hop into good old Sim Hub. So Shake It Motors, which is where I already had, as I mentioned, the wind simulation. So if we uh, we drop that down, and we drop that down, um, you can see what I already had enabled for channel one and two on the wind simulation. And what we need to do is enable channel three for a wheel lock the brake i'm thinking this through <laughs> so wheel lock on brake uh, also abs i think i enabled and then wheel slip on channel four uh, we're gonna so after you get the motors output enabled for these effects then we're gonna go back up on the top to the effects profile and um you can see I've got wheels lock, wheels slip. We're already enabled. Speed with curving is for the fans. 
so I can show you what the settings are, but basically it's just at 100%. Uh, the motor shield output itself is only at 70%, and I try to, uh, I, I don't know, I adjust that up and down as needed. It's kind of like a master control. Um, and then wheels lock, I am running at, showing it here anyway, at 46%. Um, really what that's doing is uh, varying the amount of voltage going to the rumble motor so you can kind of fine-tune it and I noticed that if I had it too high I got kind of like a rattling sound so I tried to dial it down enough that I could feel it strong but not get that terrible rattling sound so these are the settings that I have for wheels lock on the brake and now we're gonna show you wheels slip so this is um, on the accelerator only and you can see the settings that I have there and dialed in it uh, over on the right there for the volume is really the amount of power we have going to it when it triggers so that was again that 58% but I found that tuning it up and down slightly um, had a uh, an effect of kind of being able to eliminate or reduce the rattling sound as I was shooting this video and screen capturing this I stumbled upon traction loss which I had no idea was in there it's a recent update for sim hub so I did enable that and then um, played around with uh, wheels lock wheels slip and traction loss when I was in Gran Turismo 7 um, I did not really land on exactly great settings for it so it's something I'm still uh, still playing with but I mention it so if you're doing this uh, that is available and it did specifically say traction loss was applicable to Gran Turismo 7 so if you're doing this have a look in there and then I went to Thingiverse and found a bracket I thought would work well for a 25 millimeter rumble motor so I printed that off I've been learning how to 3d print with a printer I've owned for about three and a half years just started getting getting around to learning how to use it so here I'm taking the pedal face plate off to uh, just make it easier to deal with the holes here and this STL model that I found you can see has a kind of a clamping hole there to run a fastener through and I thought I'll just use a zip tie what I was a little skeptical though is that there's only one mounting point for the bracket to go onto the pedal itself and I was a little skeptical but we're gonna forge ahead and probably deal with that in just a bit but uh, first things first, let's get this bracket mounted on there. Thankfully, the fastener, the screw that uh, came with the Fanatec pedal plate was long enough to go all the way through that bracket. And then we use these cool little uh, Fanatec wrench that came with the pedal set and uh, the, the Torx on the other side of it. And I got it tight Then I took a zip tie and instead of using a fastener to clamp that shut, I just went with a zip tie thinking this will be just fine. It doesn't need a lot of force to hold it tight. So I cranked on that zip tie by hand and then tried to snug it up using my multi-tool. And then I uh, cleaned up the zip tie again there. And you could see even as I pulled that off, it wasn't very tight. And as I looked at it, I could see I just didn't like this method. So I decided I'm going to drill a second hole and then uh, we'll use a second zip tie. Uh, or excuse me, we'll run the zip tie through the pedal itself, the pedal housing, so that it holds the bracket on the top and then the uh, screw that goes through the pedal plate will hold it on the bottom and I figured that would make it nice and solid. So I drilled a hole and then got my little hand file out just to deburr it, especially with a zip tie going through there. Wanted to keep that nice and smooth. So here we go, back to it. With the pedal plate up in place. We get the bottom one on and then run the zip tie. I had to kind of feed it through and fish it through there. 
And I already was like, yeah, this is going to be much better. It's going to hold it solid. It won't be able to swing, pivot at all. And uh, here we go again, cranking on the zip tie by hand. And then we're going to give it one little snug there. And as I did that, I could feel it and hear it. And uh, let's get a close up here of what happened. The zip tie just ripped right through the plastic. And uh, that was disappointing after all that work. So it's time to go on to plan uh, C, are we on? I'm not even sure. No, maybe D. So I learned how to use Fusion 360 and I created my own simple standoff type mount. Um, this wasn't too difficult to come up with and then I'll show you how that's gonna end up uh, working in this scenario. So here we are 3D printing again in that like kind of light blue color filament. I think it looks pretty cool. So that's what I ended up with. And you can see there's no holes in it. So uh, we'll take care of that next here. Take the standoff and put it on the back of the plate of the housing, I guess, and, you know, handy dandy Sharpie and mark the holes so you can kind of see where I'm going with this thing. Then I went and used a drill and um, <laughs> struggled. And then I got the drill to go through and immediately realized this is also going to be a problem. Um, what I am finding is these 3D printed parts, you just, they're delicate. So I ended up splitting that one, decided, all right, let's move on to plan, I think we're up to E. So I took a little screwdriver, a little Phillips head screwdriver, and heated it up with that candle, and then just kind of pushed it through and sort of melted a hole in there. And um, I was pretty happy with this method. It did leave a little bit of like a black kind of buildup of the melted plastic, which was pretty easy to remove with a utility knife. Just kind of scrape it off there. So here we go, let's punch, melt, whatever you want to call it. The second hole in there kind of went on a little bit of an angle, as you can see. Just wanted to hit that face on the top. And then I also kind of wiggled that screwdriver back and forth to create more of a slot that would let the zip tie slip through. So I was already feeling like this is a much better method. So uh, no fasteners required either. Um, no screws required, I guess you could consider a zip tie a fastener. So kind of just prepped it there and then feed the rumble motor back through, get it lined up all nice and then I felt like I can crank on this zip tie now because all of the pressure that on that previous version was being exerted directly on the 3D model at a sharp point was now being spread off across the entire bottom of that mount and the top where the motor sits in so that's I felt like this is going to be nice and solid and I was right, it was much more solid and it looks better. And uh, it was a very simple design. I did put that up on Thring Thringiverse, Thingiverse. So if anybody wants that, I will throw the link in the description. So here's the final product in uh, test mode in SimHub and here it is in practice. I think this is a really valuable mod and especially if you're already doing WinSim and you have an Arduino Uno and a motor shield, it's pretty, simple very inexpensive the feedback that you get by having wheel spin on your accelerator and wheel lock on the left or abs is uh, more valuable than i thought and with that direct input on the pedal uh, it's more valuable than having it on a base shaker so hope you dig it go try it yourself any questions drop them below thanks for watching